Hey guys, Gus here, and today I'm going to be um, going through a tutorial on non-metallic metals, gold. Uh, the reason I'm doing gold first is because I find it a bit easier to do than the traditional metal coloured, or you know, like silver coloured uh, non-metallic metals. So I'll go through gold first, um, and in this tutorial I'll go through a little bit of theory first, and then I'll go through the colours that we need, and I'll crack on straight into the tutorial. So, a bit of theory then, uh, with non-metallic metals, one of the most important things is contrast. Um, and a very good exercise actually, that I've sometimes practiced and a lot of other people have, and I highly recommend it actually, is doing monotone miniatures, that is painting with a, a basically a, a single colour, and doing a miniature like that, like that. And what that does is it forces you to use the right contrast in a miniature. And what I mean by contrast is, with non-metallic metals you want to go from a sharp pure white pretty much right down to a near black color you really need to push the contrast for it to look like metal so the theory then um, when you when you're painting uh, various surfaces you need to be very conscious of the light source with non-metallic metal so where where that prominent white point is going to be and where it's going to catch the light as, as metal does reflective metal does now um, I've, I've sketched out a few real basic diagrams here. Now, if you've got sort of a completely flat um, surface, as you see here, then um, it, it really depends on the angle of, of whatever it is as to where the light would catch that um, particular surface. So that's when you, you start getting those, those um, beams of light reflecting off as you're turning a, a flat piece of metal you get those beams of light that will sort of um, dart across the metal. So if it's a completely flat surface, you can kind of get away with those those light bands across across the uh, surface. But when you get things like I don't know, for example, like round shields or shoulder pads, um, that's when you it's almost like a sky earth non-metallic metal. Um, so you'd have kind of a kind of a horizon reflected in the uh, in the actual metal. So for example, like this would be a, a round shield that would be turned towards the person carrying it and that way you get that kind of curve and you'd need to you need to paint that to emphasize that curve on the metal whereas if it was a shield facing towards you you'd get the opposite curve the light would curve um, the opposite way and then you've got things like your cylinders so you've got like little um, you know, like cylinders and backpacks and what have you uh, and then you'd have a light point coming down from the top and it would literally be um, across the top of the cylinder and then grading down either side of that cylinder. And then you get onto things like weapons, like swords, or what have you. And if you've got um, the light coming down from the top in this example, uh, where you can see the arrow, um, you'd have at, at the, um, in the middle edge of the sword, it would be dark immediately under that edge and then lighter towards the, uh, the bottom um, cutting edge of the sword. Uh, and then it's again, it's like opposite. So you'd have the darkest edge at the top, uh, and then you'd have those beams of light reflecting off of the the sword surface as it turned. Um, now the thing with this, um, I find is that when you've got these curved surfaces, if you imagine, uh, for example, on the sword, where it gets darker, so you, you'd get your color gradient. For example, non-metallic metal gold, you'd have you'd have a, a you know the the gold gradient building up towards that center line okay and then you'd have the light catching that center line but then you'd have the, the darkest points um, at the top here but on those darkest points you'd get like glints of light so you'd have these prominent little sort of um, white glints of light when you're painting on metallic metals and this is like this is like very basic what I'm going to go through today because you can start doing like shading with alternate colors and what have you but anyway that's like the basic theory so Hey guys, um, so the paint list then is going to be scorched brown, a bit of chaos black, a bit of leprous brown, golden yellow, and also skull white. Um, maybe a bit of uh, lich purple for the shading at the end. And I'm just going to start off with uh, base coating the Aquila on the um, Terminator. And as you see, this isn't the normal Aquila, it's got the sort of skull and crossbones motif in the center just for a little bit of extra detail uh, while we're doing the non-metallic metal gold. So as usual the trick is to get a nice smooth base coat over the Aquila and 
Um, generally, you can apply one base coat with the scorched brown or any equivalent dark brown, and it tends to, to cover pretty well. The um, the black that I've primed the miniature with is actually um, one of my favorite colors for priming. It's the um, Minotaur Raven Black. So it's a kind of an off black. It's not not quite you know um, the the color saturation of full black. So you get that that nice depth, and you can notice it. So for the next color, then um, I'm going to be applying the um, leprous brown out of one of those fucking screw top Games Workshop um, bottles, thinning it down with some medium, and then making it into a glaze. And as usual, I'll I'll do the the sort of skin test to make sure it's the right saturation, and then quite simply going from f from sort of feather to feather on the Aquila, on the uh, miniature's chest, I'll then drag that out from the center to the um, the far ends of the individual feathers. And it's just a controlled glaze, as, as I normally like to use. And it's literally dragging that paint um, in a controlled fashion towards the end, making sure you don't have too much paint on the brush uh, and just, just a little bit on the tip and, and dragging that paint out. It's normally going to take about three successive um, glazes to build up enough of that color transition on the Aquila and um, this is generally I find anyway the longest step when I'm doing non-metallic metal gold this initial base color the the first transition from the scorched brown to leprous brown is the longest um, and arguably the most important it's very very important to get this right because it sets down that base color transition from which to um, build up the extreme contrast and the, and the extreme highlights that need to be achieved when, when doing any sort of non-metallic metal to make it look like metal, essentially. So, just uh, continuing in a controlled fashion, picking my light points, um, for example, on the, on the, um, the brow of the skull, uh, on the prominent points on the little death's head motif on the bones, um, the ends of the... Uh, of the wings and also the, um, the the top of the actual wing um, it's sort of a, a center a, a pick kind of a center point on that the line at the top of the Aquila um, and I just continue in this fashion uh, doing about three coats and it, like I said it does take quite a while and this is the step that arguably you know requires the most patience really um, um, to get right uh, and as usual I always use a, a size one brush um, the Pro Art Series 7 wrong, the Pro Art um, Renaissance sable brushes I find work brilliantly. They're the cheaper alternative to the um, the Kalinsky Series 7 sables, and I find they're just as good and they have longer bristles. So they're my go to brushes. I normally only ever use a size 1, I'll only very occasionally go smaller. So as you can see here, I'm now working on the on the, the miniature's right, the right hand side of the Aquila, and again, just um, making sure that I'm not overworking the glazes, making sure that they dry in between each successive coat. Because the last thing you want to do is overwork glazes and it ends up going kind of chalky, especially when you're working with these lighter colors. And in particular, when you're working with the sort of silver non-metallic metals, then you can have a big problem if you overwork your glazes. So it's literally put the paint on, drag it to where it needs to be, um, and then leave it to dry and work on another area. And keep on going back and forward like so. So I'm um, I'm sort of on my second to third coat of the actual um of the glazes now and as you can see the the color is starting to um to come out now you you're starting to see that transition. And and really when you're laying down this initial foundation this first um glaze it's it 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 really tends to point you in the direction of where your highlights are going to be. It, it kind of gives you a template from which to work off. Again, why it is so important. And just continuing in that fashion, dragging that paint out, nice controlled fashion, very specific, very controlled, making sure the paint is always flowing off the brush. I'm now going on to my, my second transition, and I'll go straight to a golden yellow color. So any sort of uh, mid mid yellow, not too bright, um, I'm just thinning it down slightly again with a glaze medium and now I'm working out to the um, the ends again uh, except this time it's it's not all the way from the sort of two-thirds in it's going to be the kind of last third 
of the individual wings. It's just drawing that color out and drawing that transition out. This will only require about two coats. I found that it, it get, tends to get picked up by the surface quite a bit better than the leprous brown for some reason. I think it's to do with color saturation, I'm not quite sure. Um, and as you can see, again, dragging the, dragging the, the, the colors out, and this time concentrating on the lower part of the wing, the lower and outer, as opposed to just dragging the entire surface out, it's the lower and outer. Um, and really emphasizing that lower line and the outer edges of the wing. And you'll see what I do now, I, I drag out um, a kind of, it's almost like a, a dry brush in a sense, you know, with a with a, a wetter brush on the, um, on the far ends of the wings, just to give it that little extra bit of color. And same again on the top of the Aquila. Um, I'll then enhance that that sort of line at the top of the Aquila, um, and on the skull I'll I'll draw it down towards the brow and also out towards the um, the the prominent ridges um, either side of the skull that that come up from the brow. Um, and at this point I'll also pick out the um, the lower pieces of the eye sockets, uh, which I didn't do with the leprous brown because it's such a small area, and also the 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 top of the nose on the skull as well. Um, and as you can see, I'm working on the other wing now. Um, and same again, the, the lower and outer areas of um, of the wings. Now, um, as I said, it'll only take about two coats, but particularly when you start to get to the lighter colors, you need to make sure, um, and I was cleaning my brush in between um, each wing, you need to make sure your brush is very, very sort of, uh, a very clean so the paint flows nicely. Now I'm going on to the the 50-50 mix of skull white and golden yellow, um, watering it down ever so ever so slightly with the uh, with the medium. And again, just really emphasizing these highlights now. The uh, the the tips of the wings, also the inner edges, um, all the all the the uh, the brow of the skull, the uh, prominent points of the bones protruding from the the rear of the skull. Um, and really picking out these light points now. And now it almost comes down to a slightly kind of lining technique. And it's very specific, uh, right on the ends. And you'll see now it's starting to really build up that contrast on the miniature. Um, and when we go to white, it's literally little dots of white when we build up to it. But this now, it's just a bit more than dots. It's kind of like a tiny little line um, and emphasizing that outer and lower edge of the actual um, the wings and there's prominent points where the where the light would really hit that metal um, and when when I'm doing the the bones behind the skull I'm actually making sure that I'm um, catching the top parts of the condyles of the actual bones the the round bits of the bones I'm catching the top edges of those of those uh, round bits the condyles is what they're called um, so I'm going to continue this fashion normally this doesn't take a lot it takes like I'd say one and a half coats. It's reworking a little bit some of it. Now I'm going to work on to um, work up to pure skull white, watering it down ever so slightly, just again to try and prevent that chalky buildup which we don't want. And and now we're going right to the outer edges um, and picking out those ever so prominent points. It's almost literally little dots of white. Now there's different schools of thoughts on this. Some people like to do quite a lot of dots. Uh, to, to really make it look like sparkly metal, but this is just for a basic non-metallic metal gold look. So it's just, just pick out the prominent points and uh, you can't really go far wrong from there. Again, making sure that I'm, I'm always keeping that medium um, uh, mi mixed in with the, 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 the small bit of paint that I'm using on the palette to make sure it's nice and watery and it flows very, very well. And you'll see because it's so thin, I'm actually having to, to double dot if that makes sense. I'll put a first dot down, then a second dot down in the exact same place because the color saturation isn't 100%, but it's because the paint is so thin and it keeps it nice and smooth. Okay, and as you can see, it's really starting to um, emphasize those uh, the contrast in the metal. Now, with, with gold non-metallic metals, one of the things I like to do is use purple. Um, and this is because if you look at the color chart, uh, the complementary color to golds and yellows is purple. And now the way I do this is I create a glaze and I'll actually shade down the um, shade down into the recesses with the glaze. So I'll do two glazes of purple before I mix a bit of black in and do two glazes of that. And the first one will literally just be into the recesses 
of the where the wings overlap and also where the skull joins onto the wings. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll actually do the same thing again, but then I'll line underneath each individual wing ever so lightly because it's a very, very thin glaze. And this will really, really bring out the colors and add a lot of depth. And now for the second glaze, I'm going to mix in a bit of black. Um, and it's the same again, except you, you're drawing it in even further into the recesses and you're not going out as far. So it's the same again, approximately one or two glazes into the recesses where things overlap um, and also where it joins to the skull and then a, a bit of lining um, in between those individual wings. And this should give you a nice, deep, rich, non-metallic metal effect. It's basic and it's effective. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial guys and take care.